plan for mankind can't really be summed up in a, in a couple of clever little pithy statements. It takes a whole lot to get through the scriptures and, and come out with any understanding. Now, all of us find a place where we're comfortable. All of us find a place that speaks to us. But this guy is a real challenge. And I, 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 I'm going to look at Peter from Matthew's viewpoint. And we're going to start in, in chapter 4 of Matthew and, and just look at two verses. Verses 18 and 19 of chapter 4, we finally meet him. Now, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So we find out. What's his background? He fished for a living. And he, and he, Jesus, said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Wow, not only did Jesus call them, and not only is this the point at which uh, Peter and Andrew were called, but he made them a promise. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. One of those suddenlies of God, immediately. Have you ever done something immediately, and you just did it? And you weren't sure why, you weren't even sure how, but you were sure that you were supposed to? Man, this, this would that there were more of those occasions, you know, in our, in our walk. Um, we go to chapter 10, and, and we're going to take a walk through Matthew, because um, most of, of what I found is in Matthew. Chapter 10, um, in the first two verses. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. But Peter and the, and the early disciples were given authority and a healing gift. Amen. I, I don't know how much of it was in evidence but it unfolded later on. Um, and we, we read about that. In, in chapter 14, look how fast we're going through the book of Matthew. In chapter 14, verses 27 to 29. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. You know where that happened. They were crossing the Sea of Galilee. A storm came up. They were in a little boat, and it's a big storm. And, and Jesus didn't get in the boat with them. But he met them out there. And he speaks to them, saying, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. I would think that's Peter's first miracle. Hey guys, <laughs> no flippers, you know. Um, he just did it out of obedience. When have you and I, when's the last time we had a, a command from the Lord that we obeyed? And then look back and say, I don't believe I did that. That must have been God. Is, is Peter any different than us? Did he get any gifts that we weren't given? Was he really special? Did he glow in the dark? He was an apostle. A fisherman. Chapter 16. 1616 is a verse we all know. Hmm. Jesus asked the question. In verse 13, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they gave him this litany. Oh, some say it's Elijah, John the Baptist, they're one of the prophets. Oh, you know, it's somebody, somebody big, you know. 
And he said to them, Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. How do you know that? He was a fisherman. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Let me ask you to consider, has God ever shown you something that you didn't know, either in his word or, or in a quiet time, or in a circumstance that you didn't orchestrate and, and weren't really happy about, and something happened or somebody said something, and boom, you had an epiphany. Oh, that was God. You could be alone in your car, you could be scrubbing your, your bathroom, uh, doing your dishes, mowing your lawn, who knows? And God just gets your attention. And you say, you either say something or think something or know something really profound. I mean, Peter, how did he know? Well, Jesus explained it to him. He told him, my father revealed this to you. You, you know, he just wanted a group. But you, you, you presented yourself, you were willing to speak up, and, and, and you uttered the truth. Have you ever made a statement and then walked away saying, I didn't even know I knew that? You know, isn't the Lord at work in us? Is, isn't he doing something to draw us closer to himself and reveal his indwelling presence? I didn't think of that, but how come I knew it and said it? He continues, um, that was 1616. <laughs> Let's just drop down a few verses. Verse, Jesus is now telling his disciples in verse 21 what's going to happen. In verse 22, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. They're not going to do that to you. We got your back. Verse 23, but Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. Mm. Oh, the rock. Peter the rock became a stumbling block. Have you ever been for God and, and tripped over God at the same time? Or thought you were on God's side and said or did something that was so opposite to the way God would have handled it? But he didn't stop loving you, did he? He didn't write you off. He didn't throw you out. He didn't um, take away your, your pen and say you can never come back. Mm -hmm. He just tells you. That was done. Yes, Lord, I'll never. Have you ever said, thank you, Jesus, I'll never do that again, or I'll never go there, or I'll never say this, or what was I thinking? Do you have that kind of a working relationship with the Son of God that you can be honest with him and he can be honest with you? Or did you meet him one day on the Damascus Road and keep going? Is he a constant companion? Is your life changing? Nobody made more mistakes than this guy. Nobody was more enthusiastic than Peter. He didn't always get it right. In fact, he got it terribly wrong. And, and we'll see that. Um, in chapter 17, verse 4. Oh, there. Chapter 17, they're on the Mount of Transfiguration. All of a sudden, Jesus is transformed into his post-resurrection presence. And who's with him? Moses and Elijah. Now, they're both dead, but they're there in a glorified state. And 
He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His garments became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll make three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Let's, let's build a monument. Let, let me build you a monument. Jesus basically told him, listen, you saw this. But it's, not, it's not for publication. That's why the press isn't here. You know, this, this, is, this is for you guys. Have you had a revelation of who Jesus really is? Has he ever touched your life or spoken to you or comforted you in a time when you needed it? And you knew it, it was nobody else, but it was him. And he said, uh, keep this between us. And you want to run out and tell the world but you don't know how to share it, but you know it was real, and you know it, it, it happened to you. Um, let's let's we'll go all the way to Matthew 26, and verses 33 and 34. Are you getting a picture of Peter? Can, can you relate to him? Mm -hmm. I got this. I don't got this. I got it. I don't got it. I think I got it. No, nah, I think I didn't get it. You know, he's a real person. You and I are real people. And we, we face the same challenges. We have the same ups and downs, the same good days and bad days, the same heartaches and disappointments. Heartache. Uh, can, can I tell you something? Jesus was known as the healer. But the only heart that he can heal is a heart that's been broken. It has to be broken before he can fix it. You can't just come skipping merrily down the path expecting, you know, everything is wonderful. You come to him just as you are, but you don't leave the same way. He, uh, uh, in, in verses 33 and, and 34 of 26. Jesus states, but after I've been raised, I, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Peter said to him, even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said, truly I say to you that this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. Haven't we all said that? Jesus, I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound. I'm in for the whole thing. I'm yours, I'm totally yours. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. That's why we baptize people. We don't sprinkle them. We put them totally under. Cover them, all of them have publicly declared they're going to serve Christ, and we bring them up, symbolizing Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And you come out of that water having publicly declared you belong to Jesus. But, you know, somebody takes the Lord's name in vain, we snicker. Um, something happens. We, we, off-color stories. Oh, we laugh. Uh, you know, isn't that funny? Um, what happened to our, our sensibilities? What happened to that transformation? What happened to us being conformed to the image and likeness of God's own Son? Yeah. It's not about your um, precious behavior and your being a good little angel of God. It's about allowing yourself to be transformed. Repentance begins up here in your head, admitting you've been doing this all wrong, wanting to get it all right, realizing you don't have what it takes. You can't do this on your own. And so we repent. We change our mind. We change our ways. We invite Christ in. We give ourselves to him. That's, that's a process, 
and it lasts a lifetime because it keeps on keeping on and it gets better and better as we progress. All right, we go to um, Matthew 26, and now we look at verses 37 and 38. And Jesus came to them in a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Funny we were talking about prayer earlier. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be grieved and distressed. And he said, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. In verse 40, And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? I mean, they have walked three years with the Son of God. They have seen him um, beyond their wildest imagination. Just the, the guy who should be on the cover of GQ. You know, um, he is perfect man. And yet, humble, submitted, um, compassionate, loves the people. Nothing. You can't find any fault in him. The only accusation they ever made about Jesus was he was a friend of sinners. So that, that includes us. But they couldn't, couldn't stay with him for an hour to pray. And he anguished and, 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 and sweat, uh, you know, uh, drops of blood. Um, that same chapter... Verse 74. He's a real man. He goes from being at the Mount of Transfiguration and seeing Jesus glorified to this. Verse 73. A little later the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. And he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Does the presence of God sometimes reduce you to tears? Just because he's so close, just because he didn't quit, just because he didn't give up on you, just because he didn't walk away, or because his presence reminds us, I should have done that different. I should have handled that so differently. I should have been more like Jesus and less like me. I shouldn't have put me first. Whatever the case, have you, have, you, have you seen Peter? I mean, would you vote for him for man of the year? You don't know if you can even depend on him. He's up, he's down. He's up, he's down. He's, he's all over the place. And he's had access to things you and I haven't had. But yet he's still human. John chapter 21. It, there's, there's a good ending to, the, to this story. John 21, we find um, verse 15. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of, son of John, do you love me more than these? There's two ways to understand that. Do you love me more than they love me? Or do, you, or do you love me more than you love them? I'm not sure which way to interpret it. But, but Peter did, and here's how he responded. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, 
shepherd my sheep. And again, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Our expression of love to the Lord, the Redeemer, the Savior, the Deliverer, the Healer, whatever other title you want to put on Jesus, is to love a sheep. He wasn't talking to Peter, the apostle. He wasn't talking to Peter, the fisherman. He would have said, love my fish. He was talking to Peter, the man whose life he had touched and changed. And our job, our job, is to express our love for him by loving the sheep, caring for them, watching out for one another. And this is going to have to be a two-part message because 30 years later, Peter penned his first epistle. And I'll encourage you to read 1 Peter. Read 1 Peter chapter 1. And next week, we'll kind of take it apart. And we'll see what kind of transformation was there in this man called Peter. This man that Jesus said was a rock. He changed his name. You know, um, Jesus had, has plans. He had plans for Peter. He has plans for you and I. But I encourage you because um, I, I, I don't want to rush through it. I think it's worth a good look. And and um, we're approaching the 11.30 hour. We had awesome worship. I believe this was an introduction um, to 1 Peter, because we're going to see, see a man whose life has been so changed and so impacted by his relationship with Christ that it ought to... Um, it ought to make us want to have what Peter had, to get what Peter got, and to do what, what Peter did. And he speaks to us. He writes this letter. And this letter is not just from his heart, but it's from his life. And it was demonstrated, because what he wrote, he walked, and, and, and he lived. Amen? So... You know, I, I just picked him because I think he was the most like us. You know, he'd get it right once in a while, but mostly he got it wrong. He, he was, you know, the first, first to raise up his hand and volunteer and then go to the wrong place or show up at the wrong time or, or whatever, whatever it is that, that you and I constantly bump into, the challenges we face, or the subtlety of having our priorities shifted continually because so much is going on that it kind of suppresses and pushes God out of it. Oh, but I got to do this. Oh, I got to get that ready. Oh, so-and-so is coming over. Oh, remember they, when they needed us to go do this? You know, um, this life is short and he addresses that. But Peter, Peter's uh, uh, epistle, the, 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 First Peter really sets a groundwork for how we're supposed to live and what we what we have going for it. Amen. 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 Elder Jim, and while Jim is coming, um, I, I, I just want to mention oh, we didn't do the announcements yet, did we? Nope. Okay. I have an announcement. Are we celebrating today. We? We. <laughs> no, if, it, if you're celebrating, I'm celebrating okay. with you, and so are all of us. Jim, a very happy and blessed birthday. Um, we love you. Appreciate you. We even baked the cake. Yeah, all right. So I, uh, well, we picked it up. <laughs> I know. we got to announce it. You have the jam. Do you, can I have... Um, oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. If not, we'll read it next week. It's in the, um, yeah. okay. go get it? I'll go no, we'll read it next week. Okay.
We got a thank you note from Jan and, and Sydney that were here a couple of weeks ago just to thank us, and I wanted to read it to you, but we'll do it next week. No big deal.